Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bring It On. Now let's continue exploring Ira, specifically the slums. Read that. You're told to come up with a hundred coins by tonight. Where are they, beggar? I'll go ahead. Battle Bliss Arena. Nobody's given any alms. Nobody sent misers ever pass by, passes by. They never give, only take. Shut up, scum. It's like a tooth for every missing coin from every one of you. And once you run out of teeth, I'm going to the eyes and fingers. Check out the arena a little later, once we finish mapping out the rest of the city. Or this part of the city. Alright, so here's our camp. I assume we're right here next to this arena type building. Alright, let's go up here and grab this loot. Are we ready to move out? I forget exactly where it's at. Can't hide from me. I'm prepared. All right, so we got pocket lightning. <laughs> Whenever the word of this plus four shocking burst star knife lands a sneak attack on an enemy, the enemy loses five spell resistance for one round. I want the experience. But I don't think there's a way for us to get around it without triggering it. We can't get to the other side. Together we stand. So what we'll do instead is just teleport huh? back down. Oh. Yes, what? It's not like we're really hurting for experience anyway. Of course, there's up here as well, which may be accessible from elsewhere. So we as a player do have control over when the buildings move. I know it's not on a timer like I initially thought. The mongrel did it. But we can't interrupt it mid movement, it seems. So we have to. We still have to wait. So we need to get back down. Let me try going up here. Also, teleport across, most likely. A little tedious, but I do like how the player has control over which buildings move and when they move versus waiting for a timer. Requires a little experimentation though so you don't miss anything. Why is it so cold? Why do my teeth ache? Please, give me another hit or something. It's to be a guard to Shamira herself. When did I lose it all? Bloody shadow demons. It took everything from me.
Aha. So a trap up there. Also some loot. You require my unbiased opinion? I'm always open to ideas. Was that considered out of range? We might have to do it from this side. Yeah, this lowers. Okay. We'll keep that in mind as we go forward. Not gonna back to right quite yet. Quick save. Since there are some hostile denizens in the city, need to play it safe. This place is creepy, isn't it? Even by the city's standards. Rushlai casts her eyes over the devastated landscape of the slums. But you know, believe it or not, one of my few good memories of the Abyss is from this place. Will you tell me what happened? It was a bad day for me. I was hiding from some dangerous demons I owed money to. Or rather, now I come to realize that it was just a low-grade street gang who must have been eaten up by someone stronger since then. But back then, they were a real threat to me. The thugs have already made a hole in my side. They are following my blood trail to finish what they started. I barely managed to find a quiet corner, some basement or shed, but it was already occupied by this tiefling. I was ready to flee, he smiled and told me I could sit beside him. Rushlai smiles. I was probably acting like some skittish animal. I sat as far away from him as I could, ready to stab him or make a run for it at a moment's notice. But he just gave me a healing potion, told me I could hide there as long as I needed. We started talking. He was a traveler from some other plane, not Galarian though. He was also hiding, but I don't remember from who now. He remained in that hideout for several days. He shared his food with me, some kind of pancakes, odd ones, spicy. I never tried anything like that before. I thought he expected something from me in return. Well, you can guess what I thought he wanted. But he didn't lay a single finger on me. Instead of saying goodbye, he said, Don't thank me. Just pass it on. Back then, I didn't get him at all. Only when I came to Dresden did I hear that phrase again and learn what it meant. What do you think the phrase means? It's like revenge, but turned around. A stranger does you a good turn. It doesn't demand payment, and in exchange, you find another stranger and do them a good turn for free. It sounds odd. Demons wouldn't understand it. I barely understand it even now. But the main idea is to increase the good in the world, right? Did you ever meet him again? No. Never. So, did you pass it on? You know, now that I think of it, I didn't. I've helped many people since then, of course. But all of them were mortals back on Galarian. I never helped anyone in Illusionira which means I still owe him a debt. Why don't you repay the debt right here and now? Now? But... Bruce Lai looks at the dirty streets, and the even dirtier locals. You're right. Why not? Hey you. Wait, hold on. Don't run away. Just stay where you are. With a fast determined pace, Bruce Lai approaches a dirty, scab-covered Abrikandilu. Now what you need? The demon's eyes dart around, seeking potential escape routes. As soon as he realizes that no one's going to beat him up, he bares his teeth. He must... well... The succubus cringes under the little demon's glare and hastens to finish. He must need money, so here you go. Take it. Now, the African Dilu snatches the pouch out of Rushlai's hands and weighs it in his crooked and deformed palm. Ha! Huh, so what I gotta do? Stab someone? Torch something? You don't have to do anything. This is simply for you, no reason. Pass it on. The succubus says the last words to the Emperor Kandilu back as he scurries off. Oh, that's it. He's gone. I'm not even sure if there was any point in all that. I bet he didn't even understand a thing. You needed a lot of time to understand, too. That's right. The confused expression on the succubus's face gives way to a timid smile. 
I don't know if I've really changed anything by giving gold to that poor wretch. But you know, I feel better now. It's not because I repaid my debt to that traveler. It's just, I did something for someone by myself. I didn't think. I just did it. Before, I only knew a world where everyone tried to devour each other. But now, when I know what it feels like to help others, I can think of another world. A world where everyone helps. And it's, it's an amazing thought. Maybe that's what Elysium is like. A sturdy door locked and covered with frightening carved pictures. As it should be. Oh, we can go inside too. Do that in just a second. That is not far. A group of dirty beggars in tattered clothes have gathered around a handsome young man with messy dark hair. The crowd is clearly hostile, but he doesn't seem to notice. It gives the beggars a charming smile. Completely oblivious to the sharp shivs glinting in their hands. Geocot. Oh, the old man has a glove puppet on his hand. A dragon made of rags with buttons for eyes. He raises it up and begins the, to ventriloquize in a surprisingly deep voice. Hey, you lousy parasites. Who's in charge here? The old man lowers his puppet and beams cheerfully. He addresses the crowd normally in a warm, friendly voice. I'd like to invite your leader to a romantic dinner. With candles. I'll pay for everything, of course. Uh, do not interfere. The beggars whisper among themselves. Manage to catch a few snippets of their conversation. He's crazy. Leave him be. And what if he bites you before the crowd disperses? The young man jots something down in his notebook. And he wandered off. I want to keep track of him real quick. See where he's off to. More loot up there. Something is not right here. Two traps for this one chest. Can't hide from me. He went to the Bad Luck Tavern. So there's three entrances to the tavern. The flow of lava rushing through Lucian Iroh to the ocean originates from somewhere at the very top of the city. I know the way. Alright, let's go talk to these people over here first, and then we'll head up here, grab this loot if we can. Go back and grab that other loot. And then well, well I guess we can go in here first. The sound of your footsteps startles the demon. She gives you a baleful look. You've disturbed me, mortal. Why have you broken my solitude? On second thought, save your answers. Your reasons do not interest me. A boy of about 12 stands next to her. The boy examines his wrists, which are covered in strange round scars, but like they must have come from suction cups. His inflamed skin, burning eyes, and general appearance suggest that demon blood runs through his veins. He lifts his gaze and gives you a long, sad look. Uh, who are you? I am Zara the Grim, mortal worm. <laughs> The most skillful explorer of the dark depths of Ishiar. I learned from Master Willidus himself, the trusted mage of Our Lady in Shadow. One day, I will surpass my master's skill and take his place. Everyone knows this, including Willidus himself. So next time you dare address me, do so with respect if you like your head to remain on your shoulders. Now what are you doing? I'm listening to the ocean, waiting for this worthless whelp to recover enough strength to plunge back into Ishiar's depths. What a shame that I cannot walk its paths myself. Ironic that the most coveted mysteries revealed to the most pitiful of creatures, mortals. Now who is this boy? The demon gives an arrogant snort. Zorgis is my son, the best of my offspring. He is helpful and obedient, which is the only reason I condescend to take care of this wretched creature. Now what draws you to Ishiar? The unknowability of it. It said that everything is possible in the abyss. We demons received only the most trivial and vulgar part, vulgar part of it. Flying islands, storms of living fire, awakening tombs, and songs that can steal the minds of those who sleep. The true wonders, the greatest paradoxes, and the mysteries that should not exist are hidden in these waters. They lie so deep that even Dragon or Dagon's servants dare not descend into that darkness. It is a domain of Whipoths, where common sense is a lie, 
and abstractions are more substantial and solid than matter. Address the boy. Are you alright, kid? The boy flinches as you speak to him. He looks at you with amazement, perhaps even fear, and his eyes dart to the demon. Mother, may I speak to him? The demon's voice holds suspicion and anger. Don't speak to the boy. What do you want with him? Are you plotting to steal him away? Be warned. If you lay a finger on him, you will regret it. What are you doing to your son? Tell me the truth. The demon frowns uh, haughtily. Do you truly think I'll answer you, worm? I grow ever more inclined to destroy you as well. Mother tells me to dive deep, to places where moonlight never reaches. Down there, I... The boy stops, his words drowned out by the demon's angry hissing. Sorry, Mother. I won't say more any more. Champion, how can we allow this child to remain in the hands of this cruel creature? Normally, I would say we have no right to deprive a child of their parents' love, but... These creatures do not know love. What would you prefer, Exorgies? What do I want? In the depths, nobody knows this word, want. I wasn't taught it on the surface either. I know how to obey, dive, be quiet. But I don't know how to want. What could I possibly want? Stop addressing my property, worm, or I'll pour the waters of Ishiar down your throat, and let the ocean's tiny mollusks devour you from the inside, and turn you into their shell. How could a mother be so cruel to her child? Zara shrugs. So what if he's my blood? That's not why I feed and protect him. Little Zorgis is valuable because his brothers and sisters died during my research. He's the only one who shows reliable, consistent results. He only experiment on others with their consent. It is unprofessional to use underage children for this. This demon has violated the unspoken scientist code, must be severely punished. So I'm a little concerned there's more going on here than we know. But I'm willing to take the hand of the inheritor's advice and put a stop to it. Yeah, I will not let you torture this boy. I'm taking him away from you. The demon looks you over, and the confidence in her eyes fades. She shrugs. You want to take the boy? I don't care. He's yours. I won't fight over a trifle like the life of some mortal spawn, especially since it's nearly exhausted its usefulness. Take him, and do as you want with him. But well, it's considered a good action, so... The Midnight Isles, the Abyssal Realm of Nocticula, can be found in Ishiar, the Great Ocean of the Abyss. The boy you saved from his wicked mother gives you a look that is both sad and mature beyond his years. I sense a certain darkness within this youth, hiding deep inside. Yet he himself is not evil. His soul is pure and kind, as a child's soul should be. The boy is silent and focused, as if he too heard the voice of the hand, and he suddenly responds. Does this spirit speak the truth? Is there really darkness inside me? How can I carry evil in me, not how can I carry evil in me, yet not be evil? His gaze pierces you as if he wants to say something else, but reconsiders at the last moment. Can you see and hear the hand of the Inheritor? Yes, he glows, and he is not evil. I think I like him, but I feel there is an irrecon irreconcilable conflict between us. It is unfortunate. So this child can hear and see me. He is not evil, nor is he a sorcerer, a mage, or a wizard. He wields no spells that could reveal the unseen, and carries no such spells cast by anyone else. Or someone else. He just sees. What powers does this youth possess? Well, he said the spell, his spell only works against evil creatures. If he's not evil, then he should be able to see him, right? Now, uh, who are you? Mother named me Xorgis. I'm a creature of her making, but until recently, I was her creature in every way. I had many brothers and sisters, but I survived her research, since I was the only one left. Now that my mother is gone, I don't know who I am. My Zorgis? That name means nothing. It was whispered into my mother's ear by Ishiar. So who am I? Tell me about your mother. Her name is Zara the Grim. She used to be a pauper, a diver who collected what Ishiar had taken. The ocean has no floor, so she recovered whatever hadn't sunk too deep. But those bounties were as generous as Ishiar is harsh. No one knows the ocean as well as she did. 
He knows the safe passages as she guides ships, swimming at half speed so they don't fall behind. She's a child of Ishiar, who is created in it. Her first cry burst from her lips the moment she broke the surface. But many centuries have passed since her incarnation. She is dark like Ishiar, cruel like Ishiar, powerful and uncompromising like Ishiar, fertile and merciless toward her children, like Ishiar. What magical experiments did Zara perform on you? I'm too young. I don't know enough to judge them. We'd go to the shore, to Ishiar. She'd feed me potions and then force me to dive, deeper and deeper each time. By the time I was eight, I could dive so deep the water pressed on me from all sides. My body no longer wanted to ascend. I had to stay there as long as I could. Then I'd come up, my nose bleeding, and sometimes my mouth and ears as well, even my eyes. The next day, Mother made me drink a different potion and sent me down again. It was so dark down there, I could feel the touches of strange dark things. Sometimes, their vibrations reached me as if they were communicating with me. On those days, I vomited black slime. I wonder if that's the clip off that he was coming into contact with. I tried to hear their voices, but I never had enough time. Mother would be furious, beat me, brew a new potion, and make me dive deeper, stay longer. The last time, I spent seven hours in the water. There were so many vibrations they enveloped me. I then realized I am neither food nor an enemy, but I have the blood of the enemy in my veins. What does it mean? I don't understand. It was a little boring, so I imagined that I was a giant octopus floating in the deep, waiting for prey. I'm afraid no one else will tell you more about me because you angered my mother. She is vindictive. A remarkable discovery. Pity I cannot include it in my encyclopedia, as your mother obtained this knowledge in violation of professional ethics. I recommend that you visit any research institute in Absalom. Demand lifelong compensation in exchange for this information. Send me a letter if you want to vouch if you want me to vouch for you. Richline's whisper is barely audible. Thank you for showing concern for this demon, who is a stranger to you. Do not confuse sentimentality with compassion for damage caused by prof by a professional colleague. All the same, thank you. So what are we gonna do with you now? I'd rather not go home. I have nowhere else to go. What do they do, those who have nowhere to go? I don't know. Maybe I should live in Ishiar. Champion, you have no right to leave him here by himself. He needs care. Fate has entrusted you with this child. Have faith you will make the right choice. Explain how to get to the Nexus. You will find refuge in my camp if you so choose. The boy nods solemnly. Thank you for not deciding for me, but grant me the right to choose. Others have not done this, and so I will accept your invitation. The little one is now safe in our care. Neither his cruel mother nor a remorseless kidnapper will cause him further harm. I'm glad we share a belief that children should not be victims of such evil. I am certain young Zorgis will be better off on Galarian. Yeah, I think so too. I don't know the best way to get up here. Might have to do it from over here. Alright, let's go back and grab this loot that we missed. We're gonna activate this trap. But he's okay. I must part with everything demonic in me. Oh, but Desna, please allow me to keep my lovely, irresistibly beautiful wings. We left Sila behind. That's okay. Should be okay back there. Alright, so I think the best way... It's all the way over there. I might be able to teleport from up here to get there. I'm thinking maybe not. Let's just get back down, and we'll make our way back over to the other street. We will win this war. Anything new?
thought the easiest way to get to this was from up top. Maybe not. That. This is the one we can teleport to from down here. I think we have to do it from up here. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, let's do that. As it should be. Then we start exploring the insides of these buildings. Starting with the one that's locked. Again, it's a little tedious, but not too bad. At least they give you some control over it. If you have any control over it, then it would be a little aggravating. That's right, we can't get to this, can we? So I think we need to circle all the way back around. So let's go That's over here, climb far. up this. Thanks, Lan. You're so awesome, Lan. They should rotate the camera for me. In a place that I'll go ahead. Camera rotations control your pathing. So where was it at? I think it's up here. That little bit further south. So we should be able to get to it from right here. The world has suffered enough. Huh? Oh, yes. What? Let's see the behind again. That's okay. I know the way. Uh, this might be a fight. Uh, look who's strolling down our street. It's a, it's a seal. It's a roof. It's not even a street. Do you know there's a road toll here, Precious? Pay up. Uh, no thank you. You've crossed the wrong I mountain. will resist! Got a couple of buffs. I can't charge anybody. We're too close. Let's try this. Prepare yourself. Oh, I can't charge that guy. Perfect. Uh, hang in there, buddy. Let's drop a heal. Just to stay alive. I was not a fan of that. Done my character, so he fell off his horse. This spell doesn't work like that. So stuff to sell, but nothing. The struggles never cease. Search for the beauty with your heart. Nothing unique, Not sadly. Please allow me. I've finished here. Is there more? I'm glad I was useful to you. All right, nothing good up here either. My will is resolute. All right, cool. I think that's all the rooftop loot that we've come across so far. There could be more elsewhere, but nothing that I see right now. I'm always open to ideas. All right, let's get back down here. You are my favorite aid. All right, so we have one casting of it left. That's not good. Now I've backed myself into a bit of a corner. We might have a scroll of Dimension Door. Let me see. Because <laughs> I may have just messed up. Hmm.
Yeah, now we're in a pickle. I don't know where my last save was at. <laughs> it was up here before the fight, so you know what? I'm gonna go and load this and redo the fight. I need to cluster everyone around in Nenio as close as I can before we uh, use Dimension Door. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Alright, since we know there's a fight, we've already won it once. Uh, let's go ahead and just pre buff a bit. The world has suffered enough. From all ears. Focus on the goal. Don't fall here. I swear it. All right, swarm Let's this guy. This send my way. cavalier after this guy. This will hurt. <laughs> and any of you can come up here too if you want to. You want to You're stay over there. Actually, you know what? Drop a slow instead. We're actually trapped on this side of this guy. There we go. Alright, then focus down the... What's things called? Bloxus. Because yeah, they're pretty dangerous. I can still fight. You crossed the wrong mongrel. Mind over muscle. Be gone, stream. Alright, cool. Alright, we should I do the same thing. I finished here. So we didn't make quite as much more? progress as I would have liked this episode. It's a little bit more talking as I'm anticipating. I like, I didn't make as much progress exploration wise as I would have liked. I'll go ahead. I know what to do. Alright, everyone get as close to Nenio as you can. My will is resolute. I am prepared. All right, that should be good. I'm gonna quick save, just in case. Perfect. I know the way. All right, I'm gonna get back to that locked door, and we'll explore there next time. They go to the tavern and check out the arena. Time permitting, of course. Where's it at? Here it is. The mongrel did it. What was that? Oh, the Nexus. Again, it's a little tedious, a little slow going, but we are making progress. As it Got some character be. growth for uh, Arushalai. We saved a boy, sent him back to the Nexus. We'll have to go back there and speak to him at some point. Um, I wonder what Greybor would have said to her. Because Greybor is hunting Willidus. It's probably not Search super important. With your heart, not your eyes. All right, but for now, I'm going to call it here. Next episode, we'll start exploring the interior of the slums. Uh, at least the buildings that we found, and go from there. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.